It's my pleasure to have uh, one of the great uh, pitching, one of the great baseball legends here of New York City, Mr. Al Leiter. It's because you're a Mets fan. <laughs> That's just that. I respect the Yankees. So you came up in the Yankee organization and ended your career with the Yankees as well. But talk about growing up in Tom Rivers, Tom Rivers, New Jersey, being able to play for both local teams. I mean, did you um, think this dream would be that perfect? Ooh, perfect uh, is a uh, is a hard word because I don't think uh, anything's perfect. But I, I could tell you this: having grown up, as you say, in Tom's River down the Jersey Shore. Uh, I rooted for the Mets because my dad was a Mets fan and he loved Casey Stengel and the lovable losers and always rooted for the underdog. And at inception, my father, who was born in Manhattan, lived in Long Island. I became a Mets fan, the youngest of seven, five older brothers, one sister. And then fast forward, uh, I'm a pretty good pitcher at a high school and I get drafted by the New York Yankees. And uh, I, I joke with, uh, with Michael Kay all the time because I, I say this with absolute uh, truth that I, w I was a fan and am a fan of baseball. So when I tell Michael that actually as a kid, even though I rooted for the Mets, that when the Yankees were doing well, especially there in the late 70s, I rooted for the Yankees. And I also rooted for the Phillies because it was easy for us to go on Route 70, head west, get over the Walt Whitman, and be right there at Veterans Stadium. So he thinks I'm a fraud. He says, you can't do that. Fans are fans. And uh, I guess I'm a fraud in his eyes. But I, I love baseball. So... The irony is, is uh, you know, I rooted for Tom Seaver and Jerry Kuzma and Matt Lack and George Theodore and those guys. And, uh, you know, three years out of high school, I'm playing for the New York Yankees with uh, Dave Winfield and Ron Guidry as my teammates. So it's, it's pretty cool. Good, good ride. And you got to see Steve Carlton as well, you know, in his prime. You know, I always say that, you know, growing up in that area down, I don't know how far this goes, but down the Jersey Shore, you, we had uh, Channel 17 at the time, which was the Philly station. 11 picks was uh, Rizzuto and Messer and White. On, uh, on 11, and then we had uh, WR with Murphy and Nelson and Kiner, and you know, so it was so on a given night, I could have Kuzman or Matlack, Gidry or uh, or Lefty and Carlton, who was Sparky Law. So, you know, it was fun uh, to watch and uh, great baseball player. I wanted to talk to you. You have a sense of um, being part of winning teams, and you bring that leadership in the clubhouse, and it shows in your pitching. Talk about um, the foundation that was laid for you when you were coming up through the ranks to be able to to have such a successful winning attitude and winning uh, demeanor. I, I think a couple of things. I, I was lucky to be part of winning organizations, and winning organizations in the sense of that I was on teams that actually tried via payroll even back you know before the 200 million dollar payroll you know starting with the yankees they always tried with mr steinbrenner i got traded to toronto blue jays during the the late 80s and early 90s it didn't get better than that there was a winning team there i was lucky to be part of two world championships then i got traded to florida marlins wayne Huizinga ended up spending some money we win the world series i go to the mets it's a big market team i rooted for they tried to win 2000 we got to the world series 99 we got to nlcs uh, where else did i go Oh, I finished with the Marlins and then the Yankees, so it's full circle. I, I attribute much of uh, what I learned through uh, Dave Rigetti. He was my mentor. He's a guy that I, I look up to to this day, uh, the great Yankee uh, closer. Now the, the Giants, right? Pitcher coach for the Giants. Pitcher coach for the Giants. And, uh, you know, he just, just he taught me how to be a pro. And, uh, you know, I, I think all along in life, you know, whether, whatever your job is, you know, you, you look to your mentors or those who are before you and you, you pick – you know, the pluses and minuses of uh, people that you respect and you kind of adopt it as yours, and he's one of them. I want to talk about 1999, the, um, the playoff to get, in, to get the wild card slot at Cincinnati, that two-hitter you pitched. Was that the greatest game you pitched in your career? How did you feel about it? How did I feel? Yeah. It was an unbelievable game. <laughs> you said before the game, that, uh, before the so biddies, Mets fan grew up near the Shea Stadium and all that. Um, you know what? I'd have to say it was the greatest game. And even though I threw a no hitter with the Marlins, and I had some big moments, uh, you know, some other moments. But when you're in a compelling moment, uh, also Game Seven with the Marlins. But I, I think because it was with the Mets, and and we're sitting in uh, Diamond Club at Chase Stadium, we're waiting to find out if the Reds win or lose against Milwaukee, mm -hmm. either to fly into Cincinnati, play in the 163rd after game, the sweep after the sweep of That's Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah. That's right. We had to sweep Pittsburgh. Uh, on a wild pitch, Piazza was up. I forget who scored, but uh, so we, uh, so it was cool because I'm sitting there and I knew I was either going to start Game One against the Diamondbacks against Randy Johnson, or I was going to pitch this one-game playoff. Mm -hmm. 
we ended up having to do the one-game playoff. You know, it was a great game. Alfonso hit a home run in the first. Ricky Henderson hit a home run in the first. I had a nice little lead, and uh, it turned out to be a, a well-pitched game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk about, um, like here, talk about how special this cause is, because Alzheimer's, it hits every family. Well, um, for one, uh, you know, anytime you can support a, a, a teammate or, you know, in this case, a, a, an ex-colleague and a guy that I played against, and Joe Girardi and also Michael Kay, where this is near and dear to him with with the passing of his mother. Um, and, I, and I think anybody, you know, look, you know, we're, we're living older and, uh, you know, people are, uh, you know, dealing with issues other than, you know, you know, traumatic injury or uh, death uh, moments. What am I saying? I, 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 you know, whether it c cuts your life short. And uh, I, I think of people now that are living into their latter years and now we become more defined an understanding of dementia and you know Alzheimer's and other uh, mental uh, uh, brain disorders uh, that that uh, you know memory loss etc so uh, I think it's very important I, my point is I, I think it's very important because we're gonna see more people living into their hundreds and you know the, the more we can allow us humans to uh, keep our minds longer uh, this would be great